In the late fall of 1951, Topps was busy working on their new baseball card set for the 52 season. VP of Marketing, Cy Berger, and his boss, Joseph Shoren, wanted to design a card set that was so impressive and so different from anything else that it would put Topps immediately in control of the baseball card market. They were so intent on doing this that they hired two outside art agents, Woody Gelman and Ben Solomon, to assist on the project, saying that they had to get this one right or else they'd be out of a job. And just why was Joseph Shoren and the rest of Topps so adamant that they had to get the design for 1952 right? Because a year prior, they had put out a product so bad that it had to be pulled from the shelves. In case even the smallest thing goes wrong, though, there's a special panic button which immediately shuts everything down. In late 1950, Topps had just acquired a license to print pictures of baseball players to sell with candy. They knew they had to be creative in how to market this product because their competitor, Bowman, was prepared to battle anyone who encroached on their territory. Bowman had been selling chewing gum with baseball cards since the late 1930s and had a huge advantage in the market. But Topps had known for years that baseball cards were a cash cow and they needed to get into the market any way they could. So in 1950, they designed a set of 52 cards that resembled playing cards, each one featuring a popular baseball player. On the front was a picture of the player with his name and short bio in the bottom left corner. The card number was also listed, as well as varying baseball play results like strike, foul ball, or double. The cards were designed to be played with using a game that Topps designed, hoping that kids would want something to do with the cards, not just put them in their pocket. The first series was issued with a red back, but Topps also issued another series of 52 cards with blue backs. This was so kids could play the game head-to-head -head with their friends, one with the red deck and one with the blue deck. These red backs and blue backs were packaged and sold in a few different configurations. Initially, they were sold in panels of two cards accompanied by a stand-up card called Connie Max All-Stars and a piece of candy. Topps later added a team card to this configuration, and all of this sold for five cents. Topps also sold single cards with one piece of candy together in one cent packs, and then later added a configuration called doubles, which promised two cards, but no candy, for one cent. The product itself certainly was different than anything on the market, but in this case, that wasn't a good thing. In fact, for two main reasons, the 51 Topps Redbacks and Bluebacks set was a disaster. But well, we had a calamity, a horrible thing. One, the game design that Topps intended kids to enjoy was poor, not very well thought out, and confusing. By most accounts, kids did not buy packs to play a game they didn't know anything about or even really care for the cards themselves. In 1951, it was still mostly about the candy and gum in the pack, which leads to issue number two, the candy itself. Whole carnival of pleasure. It's so good tasting. Sometimes described as caramel and sometimes as taffy, the candy included with the 51 Topps cards was not very good. There was also an alleged issue with the varnish on the cards, with Topps saying that it stuck to the candy, causing some kids to get sick. There's reason to dispute this claim from Topps as the candy was individually wrapped inside the package. When Topps eventually had to pull the product from store shelves, it was more likely due to a threat of a lawsuit from Bowman rather than an issue with the candy. Today, the 51 Redbacks and Bluebacks are fairly popular to collect, with stars and Hall of Famers like Yogi Berra, Warren Spahn, and Gil Hodges in the set, baseball collectors are willing to look past the troubled release and just cherish the artwork of early tops. In high grades, some of these cards sell for several thousand dollars, like this Yogi Berra PSA 9 that sold for $3,360. <laughs> The 51 release from Topps, though it was not very well received, and it did very little to bump Bowman from the top of the market, was important because it set the stage for what was to come at Topps. The product had issues, but it did sell enough to convince Joseph Shoren that they were going in the right direction and that Cy Berger was the man to lead them. Despite its poor design and bad tasting candy that left everyone with a rotten taste in their mouth, the 51 Topps Redbacks and Bluebacks ultimately led us to 1952, when Cy Berger and Woody Gelman designed what is commonly referred to as the best baseball card set of all time.